Hey everybody, I am excited about this one today. I have something new to show you. Check out my new dashboard. Notice the cards. They're placed anywhere on the screen. There's no grid, no layout. We have absolute precision in where they were placed. And is that a media card turned on its side? As an added bonus to this new design, you can programmatically move and resize cards as needed. If you're interested in how I did this, and it was actually pretty simple, stick around and I'm going to show you. I use my phone to control my smart home, and basic Home Assistant dashboards work great for this. They are dynamic and they adjust the cards to my screen size perfectly. But in my home, I have a number of screens that I use to interact with Home Assistant, like this 55-inch touchscreen behind me. As well, I have a number of other devices, some smaller tablets, another 27-inch touchscreen, and even a couple of TVs that just provide information at a glance. Now, as opposed to the phones, with these screens, I want to be able to create dashboards that do not dynamically adjust. I want to be able to put my cards in an exact position, and as I make changes, nothing moves. Now with the basic Home Assistant dashboards, if you add a new card, it will adjust the placement of the existing cards on the screen. So every change means readapting everything. In the past, I've used grids to accomplish this. I put out a video recently on how I do this if you're interested in taking a look. But this method, although it's worked fine, it still relies on a grid. And this can make it difficult to get exact placement of cards, let alone spacing in other settings. So I've come up with a method using only two add-ons in Home Assistant. Actually, it could be done with just one, but the second adds some flexibility. So let's take a look at what you're going to need to do to accomplish this as well. We're going to start off with a clean install of Home Assistant. The only thing I've installed as far as add-ons is the Home Assistant Community Store, or Hacks. If you've never done this, look up Hacks, and the instructions are actually pretty easy. Now, once you have Hacks installed, we're going to use it to add two add-ons to Home Assistant. The first one, it's Browser Mod. This is going to allow you to modify your cards, add custom CSS styling, and this one is actually not needed, but it's a great add-on to help customize cards, and I use it all the time to make small and large tweaks. The second add-on, and this is the special one, it's called Button Card. This is a custom card that allows you to create custom buttons. There are so many ways to customize this, and it's what provides all the secrets to make this work. Okay, with those installed, I want you to head over to Settings, and then Dashboards. We're going to create a new, clean dashboard. You can call it whatever you want, I will name mine Absolute. Click Create. Actually, I'm going to jump back in there and add an icon to help make it stand out. Let's go with Beta, or B for Bill. All right, let's head over to our new dashboard and go to Edit. We're going to click the little pencil to edit the dashboard type, and we want to change this to Panel, and then go ahead and click Save. Now, let's go ahead and add our first, and since this is a panel, our only card. Well, sort of. We want to search for Button Card. This is the second add-on that we installed. Button Card has a ton of settings and features. I'm going to copy in the basics here, but feel free to check out the detailed instructions on its GitHub page. I'll explain what I have added. Of course, we have the type, a name, just button card for now, no tap action, no custom fields, uh, some style, most importantly here is the width and the height of the card. I've set it to my monitor dimensions, but you could change this to whatever size your dashboard will be. Let's go ahead and change the background color to green. This is going to help you understand what we're doing. Finally, we have some settings that affect the styling of the name, button card. We have set this to 24 pixels in size and we've made it white. Now that's the basic card. Let's hit save and see what we get. Okay, so it's one big green button. When I put this in full screen, it's going to fit the monitor behind me perfectly. And you can adjust it as you like for your dashboard. This does nothing. It's just a green button with white text and the name button card. Now let's head over to another dashboard. And to keep this simple, we'll create a new one. Name it whatever you want. We're going to use this to create default buttons, and then just copy and paste the YAML code. I'll just call mine Setup. Now let's go ahead and add a new card. I'll choose just a simple Home Assistant built-in button card to control a light. Click Save and you see what we have. I'm going to go back into Edit now and click View YAML Code, and it looks pretty simple, so I'll just copy this and cancel out. 
Now head back over to our beta dashboard and our big green button. Click the pencil to edit the dashboard and edit for the card. Under the first instance of custom fields, remove the null that Home Assistant added. Hit enter and indent for proper spacing. Type a unique name for the button card we just created. I will call this test light. Hit enter and add card. Then enter and we can just paste the YAML code from the button we just created. Again, adjust spacing and make sure everything looks okay. Copy the unique name we used and go ahead and click save. You'll see that the button card we created is now sitting on top of the main green button. Next step, click edit in our button again. This time under the second instant of custom fields, under styles, delete the null that was added, hit enter and paste the name we gave our button above. Now I'm going to copy and paste the basic settings needed to make this fast. Pause the video and grab them if you like, or I'll post everything on my website, yoyonose.com. Okay, go ahead and add proper indent and take a look at what we have. First off, and most important, is the position. It's set to absolute. This allows us to use the following settings to place the card anywhere inside the green button card. Let's go ahead and set top to zero and left to zero. You should see that the light has moved into the top left hand corner of the green button. Now we can adjust this to whatever we like. Let's change top to 150, which will move it down 150 from the top. We could then move it left by 50 and it'll instantly update. Let's move it again and let's set top and left to 300 pixels both. If we save that, we can see that our dashboard is now updated and move the button into place. Let's edit that button again and we can play with the sizing of the button. You could change height to 500 or to 50 and the height adjusts same with the width. This is why this method is nicer than the grid. With this method, you can set exact height and width for each button, independent of any others on the screen. Now with the grid method, you were stuck with the size of the grid. So let's put this one back at 250 by 150 and click save. Let's head back over to our test dashboard and create another card. This time let's make a gauge. Home Assistant picks an appropriate device. Looks like we're using the estimated current on one of my WLED devices. This looks good to me. Click on show code editor and let's copy the two lines of code. Back to our beta board and big green button. Let's go back in and edit that button. Just like before, up in the top section, let's create a unique name for this card. Add card and paste our code, making sure to fix the indent and spacing. Now copy the name and head on down to the styling options at the bottom and under custom fields, paste in fixing spacing. Now just copy the basic positioning settings from the last light and adjust as needed. Let's see if we can drop this one right beside the light card. We'll adjust our left a little and done. Click save to view your work. Now, if you really want to have some fun, we can use all sorts of CSS styling to play with this card. For example, let's add a transformation and rotate the card 90 degrees, or if you prefer 45 degrees, the options are endless. Save that card and you will see the results again in the dashboard. Nice. Let's hit edit once again and see if we can't clean things up a bit. Head up to the main card style section. Go ahead and get rid of that green background. We can change this to transparent. Let's also go ahead and just delete the name button card. We can also add another CSS element to get rid of the border like so. Click save and we have the start of a dashboard. At this point, you can start adding as many cards as you like. You can use card mod to remove the backgrounds and create interesting elements like I have here. See how I removed most of the elements from the graph card and combined it with a gauge card. I also added some chips from the mushroom add-on and positioned them exactly around the curve of the gauge card. I mean, the options are endless. So let me show you how we can move things around dynamically like I did at the beginning. Just back into Home Assistant settings, device and services, and we are going to create a helper. Let's choose number and we can call it movement value and set the max value to a thousand. Click create. Head back into our temp edit dashboard and let's add a new card. We can search for tile card, set the entity to the helper we just created, choose feature and add numeric input. Then click the pencil to edit and select slider. Finally, click show code and copy the code for that button. We just created a slider to control the value of the helper we created. And it has a scale of zero to 1000. Back over to our beta dashboard, edit our card and let's add the code from the card we just created near the top. Create that custom name, 
add card and insert the code. Fix up your spacing and then head to the bottom to add style to it. Let's set the position to 0, 0 so it's right in the top corner. Another feature of the custom button card is the ability to insert JavaScript into our button. This is how we use controls or buttons or even automations to control the style of our cards, move or resize them or even make them disappear using the opacity attribute. Let me show you. If we jump down to the left attribute of the WLED gauge, we can replace this with a bit of code. This is all detailed in the custom button site, but it's pretty simple. Essentially, we're going to simply set the left attribute to the value of the helper we added in Home Assistant, controlled by the slider. This code has to sit inside triple square brackets, and it's just JavaScript. Save that, and now by moving the slider on the helper field, the gauge will dynamically move around. To really drive it home, we could do the same to the transform attribute, and it would not only move, but rotate all at the same time. I have only just started to play with this, but I can only imagine using automations to dynamically change the cards on my dashboard to bring forth relevant information or just adapt as needed. I do plan to do another video and I'm gonna share my new dashboards. And I'm gonna show you some more styling tips and tricks. So if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed. And if you found this cool, well then like the video. Finally, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I've not seen anyone do this before, and I'm interested in what you thought and how it worked out for you. So there you have it. Creating perfectly aligned, precisely laid out dashboards is actually possible, and it's actually pretty easy to do and maintain. I hope you found this interesting and you're gonna give it a try. Guys, that's it for this one, and I will see you in the next video.